Live Dave Gaber, Streamcast Guy here, talking today about the best games of 2022. It's already been a very epic year that we're just finishing up now. I've already talked about my favorite things that have come out for the last 12 months, and I've also talked about the worst games of 2021, but now it's time to set our sights on the future. What's coming next? Because seriously, it seems like 2022 is going to be completely packed. A lot of games that people were excited for to come out this year year have been delayed into next year, and already it sounds like Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony are cranking up the big guns. Everybody is going to have some massive exclusives, and I'm going to try and play all of it. But today, I want to think about which games I'm personally the most hyped to play first. Now, there's going to be two specific rules for this video. One, we're not going to be talking about any remakes or remasters. So even though I am excited for something like Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster, that looks fantastic, but unfortunately, it doesn't count. And additionally, we're not going to be talking about anything that doesn't have a solid release window. If it's just a vague thing off in the ether, it ain't worth talking about yet. Sorry, Metroid Prime 4 fans. All right, do the rules make sense? Let's get cracking on my picks of nine extremely good looking games that are coming in 2022. We gotta begin this list with Elden Ring because this is From Software's next big game. They're the creator of Sekiro and Dark Souls and Bloodborne and pretty much every single game they make is a 10 out of 10 experience. I've already had a chance to play a bit of Elden Ring and even in the first three hours of running around, figuring out boss fights and mastering magic, I have been having such a blast with this game. It's coming out in February and already this is seriously one of the most hyped games in general. It has the most conversation, the most tweets the most people curious what the heck it's actually going to play like and personally i'm very very ready to experience it Next up, let's shift gears to something a bit more lighthearted with Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. Now, I do want to say something a bit controversial about this, which is that I'm paying very close attention to this game, and part of it is just because it's hard to imagine anything as good as the original Breath of the Wild. That was such a trend-setting, amazing game. I have a feeling that Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be a much smaller game, but I guess we're probably going to find out. The game itself doesn't have a lot of information about it. Like right now, we do know for a fact that technically Breath of the Wild 2 isn't even going to be its name. We don't really know exactly what it is, but from the trailer, it seems like it's going to be a game that's trying to shift the tone. It seems like we're still going to be playing possibly Link, but maybe one that has a darker sort to him. He's got mysterious tattoos. He's doing weird things like teleporting into the sky. Like something is different. Something is off. Something is very, very corrupted in this world, and that's honestly part of the reason I'm so excited to play it for myself. But while we're talking about console exclusives, that one's definitely going to be a gigantic banger for Nintendo, but let's talk about God of War Ragnarok. Holy heck, God of War was such a huge hit when it initially dropped on the PlayStation 4. It was the game that sort of told people that this is the next generation of storytelling. The fact that the entire game was just one seamless experience, every fight, every cutscene, every traumatic moment was one huge lump sum of beautiful, gorgeous art. I feel like God of War Ragnarok has a lot riding on top of it. A lot of us are kind of curious if they managed to do that, What's coming next? I'm excited to see what that's going to be. I feel like God of War Ragnarok, I think this is going to be the game that, for those of us who managed to find a PlayStation 5, this is going to be that game that makes us understand why this technological advancement has happened. Let's jump over to Team Xbox now and talk about Starfield. This is obviously Bethesda's next massive project. These are the people that made Fallout popular. They invented Elder Scrolls. They're sort of the definers of modern day Western RPGs. But Starfield, I feel like it has a lot riding on it. Now, part of the reason is just because it feels like Bethesda makes good games and bad games. They've been having this like flux of crazy hype and just abysmal failures back to back. But 
I do feel like Starfield, this seems like the game that's trying to do things very right. Even though we do only have very short trailers of it thus far, I'm hoping we see a lot of gameplay, a lot of details, and a lot of information leading up to launch so we understand what we're getting. Now, of all the games we're talking about today, Starfield is the most in the future. I think this one's coming out November 11th, 2022. So it's almost an entire year from when I'm filming this right now, which is kind of bonkers, but I feel like it's hopefully going to be the one that sort of caps off the next year. But let's talk about something that feels a bit more retro and yet so freaking fresh. Project Triangle Strategy is the name of this right now. This is a game that's very similar in fashion to Final Fantasy Tactics. In fact, it's very much trying to take that aesthetic but make it slightly more modernized. Now, this is by the people who originally did Octopath Traveler. I am a mega fan of Octopath Traveler. It managed to take the classic Final Fantasy formula but update it while still keeping it very retro in spirit. Triangle Strategy looks like everything I've been wanting in a game. As somebody that definitely loves Final Fantasy Tactics and has played every one of the Final Fantasy Tactics games, this looks like they're taking that spirit and bringing it back in the best way possible. I'm not exactly sure what Triangle Strategy is going to turn into at the end, but honestly, the confusion as to what this may play like at the end is part of the reason I'm just so excited about it. Now, I do want to talk for a bit about Final Fantasy VI or on the topic of it. The entire franchise of Final Fantasy has always been a very nice bright spot for me because I feel like whether it is the big games or the tiny spin-offs, it feels like every single Final Fantasy game is attempting something different with new combat styles, new characters, new environments, and FF16, this feels like it could be a good chance to really shake things up in a more fundamental way. Like some of the leaks and rumors about this game making it sound like it could be very very fast and action focused, almost devil may cry, but with even more lore stacked on top. I mean, already, whatever FF16 turns into, like, it seems like a project that has a lot of very good ideas getting poured into it, and we'll see how fun it is to play, because fun factor is the biggest thing I want out of this specific Final Fantasy. Now we got three games left here, and one of them I'm the most surprised to be so hyped about is definitely Dying Light 2. Now, I've been following Dying Light for a bit. I've been very interested in the first game. I liked it, for sure. It's one of those games that's certainly more fun with co-op, but something about Dying Light 2, it feels like that proper sequel, where the first game was such a gigantic hit that now they have a chance to increase the budget, increase the efforts, increase the scope of the game itself. Dying Light 2 seriously seems to be trying to live up to its name by just being Dying Light 1, but multiplied. It's more of what we already love. It's more monsters, more scares, more tension in every single moment. But I'm hoping the game itself manages to feel... Mm, how do I see this in a nice way? I hope that this packs the horror punch we need. I feel like this year in 2021, seeing Resident Evil kick so much butt, seeing so many different styles of jump scares and different styles of horror popping up, I want Dying Light to be that classic survival horror, but with the awesome freaking parkour that makes it unique. I want Dying Light 2 to be the game of the year for horror, at least as much as it can be. But let's talk about Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights is a project I've been incredibly intrigued by because it seems to be a Batman game missing Batman. That's the entire point of it. And as somebody who's read a lot of DC comics, I think that this is actually a very bold and very good choice. Now, let's face it, Batman is a huge system seller, so probably at the end of the game, Batman's just going to randomly pop back to life. But being people like Catwoman and Robin and Red Hood and running around and protecting Gotham against all the villains run amok, this seems like a great chance to have a lot of fun in a massive playground. And more than that, the fact that it seems to be, what, what do they say, three-player co-op? I like the idea of very different styles of exploration and stuff. Like, if we're getting a chance to actually split up and go to different alleyways and fight different villains in our own different styles, like... I'm just wanting to play this game and probably do a full master file of trying to figure out everything I can do in this game because I am so ready to just play it to bits. And that brings me to the last game I want to talk about. 
Horizon Forbidden West. I've always been a big lover of Horizon Zero Dawn. I feel like it's the game that sort of displayed the power of the PlayStation 4. But more than that, I thought the voice acting was good. I thought the script writing was fantastic. I've been curious to see Horizon Forbidden West in action. And what's crazy is that over the course of the last month, if you haven't been paying attention, they've been dropping message after message, reveal after reveal, teasing new robots, new enemies, new styles of freaking weapon we're going to fight them off with. Like, Horizon Forbidden West seems to be a very, very, very big game. Like, I think that this is going to be the first 100-hour PlayStation 5 game. Like, I'm serious, that's what this seems like, and I'm already just curious to try and figure out everything I can about it. I want to beat the heck out of that game. I want to seriously do everything I can to get the collectibles, max out my costumes, and be the best Aloy possible. But what do you think? These are just some games that came to mind. When I think of 2022, these are the games that, for me, are the tippity-top of my must-play list. But what do you think? Are you excited for 2022? Are you getting a bit burned out on the crazy amounts of stuff we all have to get to? Well, tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a gigantic thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. I've lost my voice a little bit, so I'm sorry I'm, I'm recording this at midnight. If it sounds like I'm doing a little bit of a whisper, I breathed in a lot of smoke by accident this weekend. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.